hey hi everyone this is animesh once again welcome to my channel in this video i'm going to show you a very important stuff which is needed in our day-to-day -day work so normally for installing uh, any software or testing any software like ibm softwares uh, mostly we need linux systems but in our pc we cannot do that because mostly they are windows so i'm going to show you how you can run a linux server in your windows machine using vmware player or vmware pro so let's get started quickly you can see my screen here i will show you how to download vmware let's go to google and type vmware workstation that will give you two links one is vmware workstation pro let's open this another one will be vmware workstation player now the difference is VMware Workstation Player is a very good tool to start with and it's an evaluation tool which uh, you, you don't really uh, need to uh, pay uh, too much amount of money. But VMware Pro has a limited time frame within which you have to buy it. So mostly it will allow you vmware will allow you to use it for a limited amount of time but after that you will have to buy it so i would recommend you can go with vmware player just that it doesn't have a few features but mostly we don't need those advanced features when we want to run a linux server on my pc i can very well do that with vmware player we don't need a, a workstation pro so let's go ahead and download that i will not download it i have already downloaded it uh, to make the video faster so you just go ahead and download player or you can download vmware pro so it depends on you i have downloaded vmware pro and here is my machine i have downloaded and installed so installation is pretty simple and quick i will not uh, go through the installation steps it's just like uh, clicking on the installer the exe file and click next next and and that's how you install okay i have it installed now i have few images over here i am ignoring that i will show you how to install an image and how to start a linux server using this vmware workstation okay so for that once again let's go to google and search for os boxes okay so OS Boxes is a very well-known provider of VMware images. It provides both type of images. It provides image for VirtualBox as well as VMware. Now, personally, I prefer uh, VMware. So let's let's go to VM images once you go to osboxes.org. VirtualBox images, I don't prefer that, but you can go there. I'll show you VMware for the sake of this video. VMware images. Once you go there, you can see the different flavors. It provides a lot of flavors. So normally, if we are talking about RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, mostly uh, we will use CentOS. So let's go ahead and download VMware VMDK. Okay, it stands for VMware Development Kit. Okay, once you click there, you will see several options. Now, out of these options, you can go ahead with any one of them, but personally speaking, few of the images are, doesn't work. There are few issues, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, but I have tried this and this image, CentOS 7, 8, 1804, and 1810. I have tried both these images. So you can try them out, they work very well. And there are, uh, again, in this page, they give two options, VirtualBox and VMware. So for my VMware workstation, I'll go to VMware and download the VMDK image, okay? And you can look at the info, info section. It gives you what is the username and password. So you can use this username and password to log into the server. And that's uh, where you can do sudo also. And, and later, once you sudo and be root, you can change anything. You can do anything and everything in the inside the server. So go ahead and download this VMware Workstation VMDK image. I have already done that. As you can see, the size is big. So I have already done that. Okay. So once you are done with, the, with this step, I'll show you how do you really install the image. So go to file. Once you install and open the vmware workstation or vmware player you go ahead and open file 
new virtual machine click on next it should be it 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 should be custom now here it gives the version of the workstation uh, all these things will be same here you can choose which one you need so i am using work sent over 7 64 bit yeah, these are the default ones you can change your name i can say my sent os machine okay i can say anything then it will give you a number of processors cores whatever you need depending on the base system that you have the base pc you have if you have more capacity in your base machine you can give it more all right you can change the virtual memory of the machine here and use nat i'll show it later all you can just go ahead and click next in this one you will have to choose use an existing virtual disk so this is the default option don't go for it use an existing virtual disk this is the only change that you have to make while importing the image all right existing disk file so the one that you downloaded from the os boxes you will have to select that i have a few images over here let me go uh let me see uh, all files yeah i have few images over here unfortunately i have not uh unzipped them let me unzip it here okay so it's it's going to get unzipped and it will take some time i'm going to pause my video till it unzips then i'll resume again all right, so my VMDK file has been extracted by now. I'll go ahead and uh, select it in this image, in this screen. Uh, here is the new one, 18.10, which I was showing in, an, in the OS boxes. All right, I selected that, click on next. It will so, uh, show that convert existing virtual disk to newer format. Yes, keep existing format. I'll select the default option and finish. Whoop, that's it. I'm done with my CentOS OS machine and I can go in and power on this machine. Let's power on this machine. Okay, so once I power on, it will say cannot. Uh, so I select yes here and I can go inside and there are two buttons, two options here, CentOS Linux Core and CentOS Linux. So I have to choose the second option which gives us the GUI. The first option doesn't give us the GUI. So you will have to select the second option and click on next. If you leave it for a while, the first option will be selected by default. Now it will take some time to come up and I will pause the video once again till it comes up. Uh, yeah, it will not take that long, but yeah, let, let's let's wait for a few seconds. And by the way, we can use the Alt and the Control button to come out of the virtual machine. Otherwise, if I click here, my mouse will be locked and it cannot come outside. So I can always click Alt and Control together to come out. And again, when I click inside, I can type it inside. All right. Again, another option is click in the virtual screen okay so i finished installing so you can just click on here you don't need all this uh, so i'm going to pause my video for a while till it uh, gives me the first screen okay no need to pause so here i i got the initial screen it it shows you os boxes dot org i will show you the initial screen which you got from the os uh, the OS boxes there if you go to info you can see username is OS boxes and password is OS boxes .org. So I copy this password and type in here to log in Okay, I type in okay copy paste is not working. Let's type it OS boxes dot org and click enter All right, so it will take me to the initial screen and that's it our installation is done the OS machine, the Linux server is ready in my Windows PC. Let me pause my video for a while and I'll come back while. All right, so here is the machine. I can see that it has been installed. I click next. I just do some of this. I skip it, start using Linux OS. All right, so here, this is very important. We have to, we have to see that this network connectivity is there. So what it shows is, if you see the symbol, that means this Linux server is connected to your local machine. And you can see that it is connected. 
okay it's on and wired connected and you can click right click here and go to you can right click and open a terminal and here you can just type one more thing you can type get the ip all right it's taking a little time ip and you can see if you get an ip address that means it's connected and we are good you can type ping google.com and you see that the connectivity is working fine thanks once again for watching we'll see you again and this video will help you in all my other videos where i am showing you how to install different softwares and this is how i do and uh, this is how you can do in your local machine thank you so much once again goodbye for now